dams. A dam can be defined as an impervious barrier or an obstruction constructed across a natural stream or a river to hold up water on one side of it up to a certain level. As shown in the figure, the side on which water is getting stored is called upstream side and the other side is called the downstream side. The stored water on the upstream side constitutes the reservoir. Classification of dams Dams are broadly classified into two categories rigid dams and non-rigid dams. Rigid dams and their types. As the name implies, these dams are constructed using rigid construction materials such as stone or brick or reinforced cement concrete or plain cement concrete. The basic cross-sectional profile of a rigid dam is triangular as shown in the figure. Non-rigid dams Non-rigid dams have a trapezoidal basic profile. Earth dams and rock fill dams which fall under this category are discussed in this section. Earth dams Earth dams are made of soil with minimum processing using primitive equipment. These are built in areas where the foundation is not strong enough to bear the weight of a gravity dam. As the construction material of this dam is ordinary soil which is cheaply available, the cost of construction will be less than that of a rigid dam. These can be constructed in places of low or moderate rainfall which necessitate only moderate heights for the dam. The three different types of earth dams are described here. Homogeneous embankment type When only one type of material is economically or locally available, such homogeneous embankments are possible. This is the simplest type of an earth dam consisting of a single material throughout the structure. A purely homogeneous type poses the problem of seepage which is not desirable from the stability point of view. Sometimes stones will be pitched over the upstream face of the dam to safeguard the dam against wave action and to improve the stability. Zoned Embankment Type The section of a zoned embankment earth dam will have an inner zone made of impervious soil and an outer zone made of pervious soil. Normally, inner zone will be of clay or silt or a mixture of both and the outer zone is of locally available soil. The presence of inner impervious zone provides added strength and reduces seepage of water through the dam section. This type can be adopted for dams of greater heights. A suitable filter medium in the form of transition filter combined with tow filter is provided. The provision of above filters will ensure proper collection of the water seeping through the dam section and conveyance of the collected water to the downstream side safely adds to the stability of the dam. Diaphragm type embankments These have a thin impervious core which is surrounded by earth. The thin core is called the diaphragm and is usually made of impervious soils or concrete or steel or timber. The diaphragm must be tied to the bedrock or to a very impervious foundation material. Rock fill dams Rock fill dams are made of loose rocks and boulders piled in the riverbed. A slab of reinforced concrete is often laid on the upstream face to make it watertight. 
these are more stable than earthen dams and less stable than gravity dams. The dam section generally consists of dry rubble stone masonry on the upstream side and loose rock fill on the downstream side. Rock fill dams are subjected to more settlement problems which may even result in the cracking of the reinforced concrete membrane on the upstream side. It has better resistance towards earthquakes because of its flexible nature. The structural design of this type of dam is a bit complicated when compared to other types. Purpose of Dams The construction of a dam across a river results in the ponding of water on its upstream side and this serves many useful purposes for mankind. The stored water in the dam can be conveniently used for irrigation purposes. The reservoir forms a very good source for water supply in areas where groundwater source is inadequate. If sufficient head of water is stored, then that can be used for power generation. In case of heavy floods, if water is left unobstructed, the result will be very hazardous involving irrecoverable loss of lives of human beings, animals, etc. and loss of property. A dam across the river can act as a good flood control measure by only letting out the excess quantity of water. A dam with its green surroundings forms an excellent place for recreation purposes such as boating, swimming and water skiing. The reservoir forms a good place for the breeding of fish which is a considerable wealth from dam. Fish are bred by the pisciculture department. Besides the above mentioned purposes, a dam serves many miscellaneous purposes such as adding beauty to the place where it is located and making it a place of tourism importance. The atmospheric heat around the reservoir and its surroundings is controlled well due to the large exposed area of water in the reservoir. Arch Dams An arch dam is curved in plan with its convex face holding the water. This structure is less massive when compared to the gravity dam. The force exerted by the stored water on the upstream side will be transferred to the abutments by the arch action. This dam is suitable for narrow valleys but the major requirement is sound abutments. In this case, uplift on the base of the dam has no problem because only abutments are going to bear the maximum force. An arch dam will be economical only if the length of the dam is less than its height. Therefore, this is preferable for very great heights. According to the method of construction, arch dams are classified into constant radius arch dam, constant angle arch dam and variable radius and variable angle arch dam.
buttress dam. A buttress dam has relatively thin sections when compared to a gravity dam. Generally, it consists of a sloping section, buttresses and a base slab. The sloping membrane, face slab, first takes the water load and transfers it to the buttresses which are at specific intervals. The buttresses in turn transfer the load to the base slab which forms the foundation part of the dam. The important types are the flat slab type, Amberson type and the multiple arch type. In the case of an arch buttress dam, the arch action of the slab permits wider spacing of buttresses. Lateral beams called braces or struts will be provided between buttresses along the length of the dam which provide additional strength to the buttresses. The height of buttress dams can be conveniently increased by mere extension of buttresses and face slabs. Buttress dams are less massive and can be constructed where the foundation soil is relatively weak. Enormous space available between buttresses can be advantageously used for installing water treatment plants and powerhouses. Solid Gravity Dams A gravity dam can be defined as a structure which is designed in such a way that its own weight resists the external forces. This type of dam is more durable and has maximum rigidity. It requires less maintenance when compared to other types. This type can be constructed of masonry or concrete. Nowadays, concrete gravity dams are prevalent. The dam section is massive as the self-weight is the only force which is going to resist all other disturbing forces acting on the dam. Therefore, it needs a good foundation soil, preferably a rocky strata. In practice, a triangular basic profile cannot be adopted and instead this profile is modified to accommodate the operating platform for the shutters and roadway at the top. So a practical profile will be a trapezoidal one with a sufficient free board. The water stored on the upstream side exerts a major disturbing force on the dam. In addition to this, water may seep through the body of the dam and below the foundation of the dam. This will cause uplift of the dam which also affects the stability of the dam. There are also wave pressure, ice pressure, pressure due to earthquake forces etc. affecting the stability of the dam. Of the above, pressure due to earthquake is significant and this has been the major cause for serious cracks in several dams. To relieve the uplift pressure in the dam, infiltration gallery is provided within the dam section. This will collect the seeping water and will convey it to greater depth so as not to affect the stability of the dam. 
the provision of supply sluice controlled by shutters enables the release of required quantity of water to the downstream side. A gravity dam may fail due to overturning, sliding and crushing at the toe. Generally, a gravity dam will be designed with a higher factor of safety and check will be made for the above possible failures. Timber and Steel Dams Timber dams and steel dams are special types which are not generally used for bigger dam sections. A timber dam is generally adopted for temporary requirements to enclose certain work sites or to divert the flow to enable the construction of the main dam. After the main structure is built, generally the timber dam will be dismantled. The height of the dam may be up to 9 meters. Timber dams are rarely made watertight. Steel dams are not common in use, but it is possible to construct the dam with steel up to a height of 15 to 18 meters. The construction of a steel dam may be done similar to the timber dams.